Fishing Adventures YouTube channel edition. Well, today Bushy and I head out into the ocean from Bermagui in a beautiful old boat skippered by Keith Appleby. He's a local expert. We target some striped tuna, some yellowtail kingfish, and we get onto a beautiful looking fish. It's a strange looking fish, but beautiful. It's called a latchet. Then we go down the coast towards Tarfa, a beautiful town near the border with Victoria. And we fish at the mouth of the Bega River and Bushy takes us through lure fishing for Southern Brim. It's a real masterclass, folks, and I think you'll enjoy it. And then Steve Starling heads north to Gove Island and targets some beautiful Spanish mackerel and some big, big GTs. Hope you enjoy the show. I'm Rex Hunt. All the best. Folks, uh, do not adjust your set. This is Keith Appleby and he's with me today at the beautiful South New South Wales Coast Township of Bermagui. And I've been wanting to get on your boat for a long time, Keith. Now, it's a pleasure to have you on the boat, Rex. We've been looking forward to it for a long time. Now, we're going to board the SS Binjar and That's you better right. tell us a little bit about your fantastic old craft. Oh, the Binjar was originally built uh, to do run supplies out to Lord Howe Island in 1962. So this is a well-built boat of about 25 tonne. It's not a fast boat, but it's made to handle good seas. Well, that's fantastic, folks. We get out there safely and we get home safely, and we have a good trip on the way. The major thing is that there is an alternative to marland and tuna on the south coast of New South Wales. And Keith's our man, folks. Uh, let's hit the salt and briny. See if we've got a stripey or a bonito around. Always a good sign to get a bit of fresh bait. Yeah, we're on, Keith. Well, he fairly whacked that, Keith. You reckon it might be a little bonito? I think so. I've seen a few fish chopping on the surface here all the way up. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing with your uh, old girl, the old Binjar, that your flat out speed is probably an ideal trolling speed. <laughs> you never go too fast for the lures, that's one thing. <laughs> well, look at this. And there it is, it is. A little striped tuna. Striped tuna. Oh. Now, that's an amazing thing, isn't it? Look at that. There hasn't been a lot of stripies no, around, has there? Not at all. Ready for bait. On the show before, what we do is we actually turn them. <laughs> Look at that. That is quite incredible. <laughs> now he's bleeding a little bit, Keith, so we might be giving him the kiss of life. So yeah. we might actually uh, use him for bait, folks. So that's a pretty good start. We're chugging up there at four to five knots towards Montague Island. We're here on a magnificent Wednesday morning on the south coast of New South Wales, Keith and uh, we expect it at the island about Sunday. 
<laughs> Hopefully before that. Do you have to be back at work Friday? Back at work? <laughs> Gee. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is work, Keith. <laughs> Get a life. Thank you very much. <laughs> Keith Appleby, pretty good start. He set a high standard, so uh, let's do some fishing. <laughs> Touches there, Bushy. Right. We saw a couple of kings on the surface there before. I had a bit of a bite then. Oh, oh gee whiz. Did you see what that? What have you got? <laughs> um, I reckon I've got a small king on. Beautiful. <laughs> Look at the action on that rod. I tell you what. They, this is not a huge king, but they have got some pulling power, haven't they? And you've really got to give it to these folks because the yellowtail kingfish is a serious, serious fish. Here he comes. Over against a little king. Oh, yeah. He's going to be undersized, mate, but didn't he snaffle that bit of bait? Wow. I don't know, he might be close. We might have to put him on the measure. Oh, lady, he can go back. He can get the old Rexy kiss. Have a look at that. Yellowtail kingfish. <laughs> well, how about that? <laughs> well, I'll just put my glasses there with you, Bushy. And that is a lovely kingfish, probably size, if you come to think of it. But he's going to get the Rex Hunt kiss and go back. And look at that hook right through the jaw. So we can probably easily get that particular hook out of there. And Montague Island has been famous for these fish for many, many years. I know when I first came up here to Naruma 23 years ago, thanks Bushy, when I first came up here 23 years ago, kingfish were all the rage. And then all of a sudden something happened. They had kingfish traps up around Ulladulla and our former fisheries minister, Bob Martin, put an end to them. And suddenly these fantastic fighting fish of the ocean are coming back here in numbers. And it's good to see the amateurs can come up here and get some of these fish. And also the professionals who are supplying the markets for you people who don't fish. And that's what's called a controlled sustainable fishery. We'll give him a kiss and put him back. I tell you what, Bushy, the old kingfish, they should, uh, they king itch you, don't they really go? Well, if we lace into a big one, I reckon there'll be some puffing on this boat. You well, never know. certainly will. But that was legal size, but we put him back. We might get another one and keep it for the plate. But as I said, a sustainable fishery is the way to go. The amateurs get their share and they're controlled by bag limits. The pros come out here, they lead line them or live bait them and they go to the markets in Sydney and Melbourne and everyone gets a fair share of the resource. That's the way it should be. Now it's your turn. Ah, my turn. Beautiful. <laughs> well, folks, our host for the day is Keith Appleby, the skipper of Binjara. It's good to have you on the show, Keith. I've heard a lot about you and it's marvellous to be out on the water with you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you out here, Rex. I've been looking forward to it. Well, that's very, very nice of you. So you sort of uh, cater for the casual person who wants to go out and dangle a line rather than the guy that walks into a tackle shop and spends eight grand on his gear? Yes, well, we supply everything on the boat so that people don't have to bring anything except for their lunch. It's food only. Lunch, everything else is provided, all tackle and bait. Yeah. There's nothing else. and. They take all their fish home, all the fish that they catch, they take home. Well, isn't that just absolutely fantastic? And since 1974, is the fishing as good as it was in those days? The fishing in the offshore reefs doesn't seem to be as good, but in the inshore reefs, it still seems to be good. Inside 30, 40 fathoms, the fishing seems to be still very good. There's plenty of flathead and snapper and mowong and um, table fish like the kingfish and redfish, but the deeper reef seems to be a little bit uh, scarcer to find, a bit harder to find the fish. And finally, your home port of Bermagui is where you live, you love it. What is the great attraction to the south coast of New South Wales, both on the land and on the sea? Oh, the beautiful weather, yeah. the scenery, um, well, the fishing, it's a great way of life. It is, isn't it? Away from the city and the smog and the stress. You're certainly away from that, folks, although I came along and he's got a bit of stress because he's promised us a snapper or a mawong. Uh, the pressure's on, folks. Uh, Keith, start up the old girl and let's go in search of a nice fish. <laughs> OK, Rex. Yeah, hey, woo! Hold it, stop! 
Ho, oh, fish. Fish, stop, please. Oh, I'll tell you what we've been. We've been had here, folks. Keith Appleby told me we were going to catch a couple of little kingies. Rexy, help. You're on your own. Oh, oh. oh did me. Well, I think. Well, has it? Oh, no, he's still there. He's still there. We haven't been done. Talk about a run, Rexy. Get on you, mate. Now, when Keith said a couple of little kingies, I was thinking little kingies, but this one's got a bit more kick in it. That's just a serious fish. Oh, well, he's not a big one, but for this gear, he's not bad. Here we go. Whoa. Oh, how about that? Well, I think, Rex, that these days, there's a couple of things that we can do. Is uh, we can show the folks that gel spun line has really revolutionised fishing. And what you might think is a whiting outfit here is actually one of Dump's sustains. A little bit the worse for wear. I've knocked it around a bit. But we've got 10 kilo gel spun on there, so we can really heave on that gear. And it might look like a toy, but I'll tell you what, with 10 kilo gel spun, you can do a bit of damage on just a, an average size king. Well, you did very well. I had a little bit of stripey over the side. I got a bite, but just to tell you folks, this fish is going home to Bermagui because Keith Appleby tonight is going to host us at a beautiful barbecue. Uh, you don't know about it yet, Keith, but uh, thank you very much. I've got a touch over there. All right, now we'll get the hook out of this one. These are very strong fish. Oh, Rexy, what have you done? Are you on? <laughs> He's on big time. He's got a monster. <laughs> it's hard to work with kids and animals and Rexy. Folks, look out here he is again. <laughs> Yeah, can I talk about my lovely fish? Look at this beautiful fish. What are you doing, Rexy? Oh, look at this. What do you call that? It's a yellowtail kingfish. That's not a yellowtail kingfish. That's a yellowtail kingfish. I'll tell you what, isn't this just absolutely <laughs> sensational? I can get the hook out of that one. And, uh, well, this one's I'm actually... The... Which one are we going to take this for the This one's for the one? barbie, because I reckon you'll eat uh, more than that one. You reckon? Well, All right. tell you what, mate. Just hang on a minute. I'll give this one a kiss. Back he goes again. There you are. That one's for you, Harry. You can catch that one, mate. I tell you what, <laughs> the old apples. Uh, she's apples. I hope he's all right about that barbecue. He looks a bit savage over there. Oh, I think it's a green one. I think, we're, I think we've, we've done all right. <laughs> Good on you, Keithy. I tell you what, we have a, uh, a little bit of emotion here. Keith Appleby for president. <laughs> <laughs> little Johnny Howard. Uh, step aside, son. Keith's the new Prime Minister. He's terrific. So a couple of beautiful kingfish on board. And Apples is going to take us down south of the island of Montague for a couple of moeys and snapper. And I've ordered a strong cup of coffee. But, uh, yibbity yibbity folks, I just wonder how strong it's going to be. What do you think, Bushy? Ooh, well, it's not exactly roaring away from us, Rexy, so... Uh, I've got no idea, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a stab. I reckon a flathead oh, I think a flathead like could well be a flathead. <laughs> <laughs> Yo-ho! Look at that. That's dinner. Now, that is sensation. It's a sand flathead, mate. Fantastic, <laughs> eh? Now, that's nice fish. About three quarters of a kilo. Look at him. That's dinner. I tell you what. And I tell you what, when you say that's dinner, the old flathead, is one of the culinary delights of the piscatorial world, folks. And they're good to eat, I have too. no idea what that means, but uh, <laughs> in other words, they're good to eat uh, when you catch them out here off Montague Island, Ooh. isn't it? Thanks, Keith. Right up. I'm grabbing what this now. We'll do the tickling. Rexy's famous tummy tickling. That's it. You settle down. See we that? get him under there, and then we won't be spiked. That actually works. That's that terrific. is a nice flathead, isn't it? All right. Then we'll get the hook out of him. And, uh, all right, put him in the box. That's a beauty. Look at that. And, Beautiful uh, flathead and lovely in some wild bread crumbs. I just flied and flied. Flied? Fried in a bit of flounder. <laughs> flour. You better fly this fish when we get this home. Is, It'll be beautiful. Is, thank you very much. I've got a bite. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, and I missed him. <laughs> About oh, three, three and a half nautical miles south of Montague Island. You see it up there in the distance with the lighthouse. It was also that the sounder showed us why Keith brought us here. It's a very significant drop off on the sounder, and that's what charter skippers are all about. They've been on this ocean longer than I've lost my hair, and they're the people who actually put you on the fish, and that's what you pay for. Just lifting and winding and see if we can improve on Bushy's flower pot. Come on, you're the one. Make a nomination. None of this drag Well, I'll nominate it's not a flower pot. Oh, yes, that's <laughs> no nomination. That's a well, when they come from such deep water, folks, you never ever know if you never ever have a go. So we've got a bit of colour down there now, and I reckon it's the right type of colour. It's a double header, flying gurnet on the top, and a flower pot on the bottom. <laughs> well, how about yeah. that? This is incredible. This is one of the most beautiful fish there. Niall will get you a beautiful shot of that flying uh, gurnet, folks. We need Steve Starling here. I think that's called a latchet. That's what it is. It's a latchet. Bushy, Bushy if you give me those pliers, it's a latchet. And that's a beautiful, beautiful fish. Give us those pliers there, Bushy. Let's see if we can get this hook out of this fish. Should come out pretty easy. There you are. Now, he's got plenty of spines, folks, and I really don't want to sort of pick him up if it's OK with you blokes. So I might just sort of, I can put him in the mouth like that and not even kiss him. But have a look at that, a latchet, similar to the flying gurnet. He can go back and away he goes. And this little flower pot, you've been waiting there for me, mate, so I won't muck about and I'll get rid of you as well. So away they go. Lines up, boys, we're going. <laughs> I tell you what, folks, too good. And if you come to Bermagui, ask for Keith Appleby. Because if you come out with him, the old bearded burbler can guarantee she'll be apples. <laughs> Look at that! The old bearded burbler, he's in his element. <laughs> Threw it into his mouth. Unbelievable, mate. It's just like nature. It's what we're all about. I tell you what. <laughs> this is just fantastic. Wagons, ho! Oh, oh. Thank your mother for the rabbits. Just when they think it's safe to come out. Oh, animal. <laughs> I guess in the end that's probably why we all go fishing. <laughs> We've come ashore on one of the Bromby Island group a couple of hours north from Gove and Viv Thistlewaite has dropped us off from the swordfish in one of the dinghies here on the beach and we're about to do one of our favourite kinds of fishing, a little bit of sight fishing in shallow water. Bushy, this is not a real big island. You go that way, I'll go this way and we'll meet up here in the middle, alright? Sounds good to me. If I catch a fish, I'll yell. This is fantastic fun. Just walking around this island here in the Bromby group, throwing a fly into the surf, and I've had several strikes. 
And finally, this bloke has come out and absolutely nailed it. This is what's known as a, a Spanish flag, also known as a stripey. It's a member of the Lujanid clan, the same fish that contains the uh, mangrove jack and the red bass, as you can tell from the teeth and those, uh, those big intelligent looking eyes. This one doesn't grow very big, probably two or three times as the size of this is about as big as it gets, maybe up to two kilos absolutely maximum. This guy's about 400 grams, I guess. But uh, they're a real little predator, even at that size. Very slow growing too, these stripies. This one could already be 10 or 12 years old, and a kilo plus specimen is likely to be over 20 years old. They're one of the slower growing and one of the smaller of the Lutjanid clan. All right, well, I'll get the hook out of this one. Back you go, mate and I'll just keep dropping this fly into the pockets behind these rocks. This is good fun, I like this. The setup I'm using here consists of an unweighted fly. It's a little deceiver. The only weight in the fly is the hook itself. So it sinks quite slowly, but I'm using an intermediate or slow sinking fly line which actually will drop down through the water if I let it. Now the nice thing about this system is that if I start stripping, as soon as that fly hits the water, it'll run along just a couple of centimetres under the surface, over the top of all these rocks and coral outcrops, and I won't get snagged, hopefully. But then when I get to a bit of a gap or a hole, I can let it sink down and the fly line will take the fly down into those dark nooks and crannies where the predators hang out. I tell you what, it's a very effective way to go fly fishing. Come and have a look at this, folks. The things you see when you're walking along one of these beaches out on one of these tropical islands. I'm looking for fish in the shallows, but I just glanced up here, and there's a drag mark here in the sand where a creature has come out of the water, gone up there and come back down. And the only thing it could possibly be to leave marks like this is a small saltwater crocodile. I'd say he's actually been up here having a look to see if some of these birds are nesting to maybe knock off an egg or a little fledgling bird. He's probably lay up there in the sun for a little while and then he's crawled back down into the sea and swum away. Now look, we're miles from the coast here. This is not the sort of environment that most people think of for finding saltwater crocodiles, but believe me, they're out here. This one was probably only that long, but there's no reason why there couldn't be a three or four or five metre crocodile swimming around in these waters. It's something worth bearing in mind. I don't think I'll tell Bushy, he hates crocodiles. <laughs> fish? No, it's not. <laughs> it's a little barracuda. You cheeky little fella. Look at that. Oh, he absolutely inhaled that fly. Oh, I'm not going to like putting my fingers in there very much. Might have to go in through the gills. There we go. That's come out. Now, will, will you let go, mate? Yes, you will. What a little beauty. That's a juvenile greater barracuda. That bloke could grow to two metres long given enough time. But he's an absolute little classic at the moment. He looks like a scale model of a big barracuda. I'll tell you what, there's a few others in here too. Shooting back in, see if the others want to play. Oh, oh yeah. Bushy! <laughs> oh, oh, you have got bus. Buckley's, Bushy. That's a huge cod. Oh, oh, oh. Bushy. Oh. We just had a huge estuary cod about that long come right out under my feet. Woo! This is an interesting place, I can tell you that. Oh, Stevie. Oh, Bushy, I thought you had that cod. Oh, I was hoping <laughs> you didn't see that. <laughs> it was about that big, it was a bit hard to miss. I reckon it was about 20 kilos. I just finished telling the folks that we weren't going to catch any records doing this, but if you'd landed that cod, we'd have caught a few records. Well, it's the biggest thing I've ever had eat a fly in about three feet of water. If there was three feet there, I'll be amazed. That was incredible. I caught a couple of little uh, stripies and stuff over the other side there and a couple of barracuda. But I tell you what, that was just a bit of a warm up in more ways than one. It's pretty hot here. But Viv's on his way back in in one of the swordfish's dinghies. 
and we're going to head out the other side of the island and right after the break, we're going to show you some serious Bromby Island fishing. What do you reckon, mate? Sounds good. Here he comes. I know you didn't see the shark, but... Now I got him. Ah, oh, well, Bushy, another day, another fish. <laughs> Oops, it was another fish. Oh, you lost yours. I think I got cut off. Oh, really? Yeah, something's bitten oh. everything. Mine's a nice queenie. How is that for a jump? <laughs> mm, I have nothing. Oh, he's going ballistic. Oh, big shark. Oh, dear. Big shark. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh Bushy, no. help <laughs> Oh, he got him. No, he hasn't. Now. now he has. Oh, no, Bushy. Oh, Bushy. Ah! That's more of a parlour. Get it out of there. I'm trying. Oh, that's what it's like up here. We've come out this morning out of Elizabeth Bay near Cape Wilberforce, and we're heading up into the beginning of the Bromby Islands after another beautiful night's sleep on the air-conditioned swordfish. And... Uh, straight into it as soon as we put the lures in the water. I hooked a lovely queen fish. I think Bushy had one on as well. He's got eaten and so did his lure. The trouble is there's still a bit of queen fish head on this lure. And I, every time I try and get it away from them, the sharks come after it again. Oh, I tell you what, talk about the lure of the wild. Uh, Bushy, you remember your Rapala? I remember him well. Look, his Look, name was big. Fred. He's mean like that now. The <laughs> <laughs> poor thing. Uh, and this Queenie, well, I don't even think Rex could kiss that one back to life. It, uh, well, at least it was quick, mate. Can you imagine what it would be like to fall in there? Not a good experience. Ooh. I think I might have a shark now. I don't know what I started off with. Yeah, it's changed a bit, hasn't it? Yes, I think it's a bit sharky now. Changed a lot. I'm not sure, but... Oh, he might have spat it. This is a deadly place. And things don't have a real long survival time when they're hooked, do they? No, and they start vibrating. I wouldn't mind betting whatever I've had's been eaten and then spat out, I think. And then eaten again? It's been spat out for very long. <laughs> if it spits it out again, Bushy, you pull it in. Really fast. Oh, look at it. Look at the queen, he's swimming along behind the shark. You would not believe Look that. Look at you? that. This uh, poor old gaff's got a few dog legs in it from the last time I did this. We'll see how we go this time. Okay. Oh. Oh, maybe not okay. Gee, he's got it in pretty deep, Bushy. I'm just going to try and... Oh! Finally oh, happened. the Black Death! The Black Death has died! <laughs> Look, at, Look this. at that! He has caught such a tonnage of fish <laughs> on this thing. And finally, <laughs> here we are off Gove and the Black Death. We're going to have to have a, a burial at sea this afternoon, I think. 15 years thing. old. <laughs> I want the rest of it. Let me get the rest of it before you get the fish. I need him for a decent burial. Okay. okay, you hang on to that bit. I'll hang on to that bit of the Black Death. Now, I'm not making any promises about getting this lure back, but I'll give it a go. Ah! Oh. oh, there it goes. There it goes. <sighs> <laughs> oh no! Finally, had to happen. I guess it did. Look that thing that. has had such horrendous bends in it for so many years. Oh, it's a not, bit sad though, isn't it? Not bad for a six kilo rod that ended up having 50 pound Joel's one used on it for about the last 10 years. Oh well, the death of the Black Death. Now I've got an advantage, look out. <laughs> Just because you're on a wilderness expedition and your rod dies, no need to throw it over the side and give up. Especially when it's something as uh, important as the Black Death. You just use whatever materials are available. Give yourself a generous overlap. And I reckon this will catch another fish before the day's over. Maybe. Oh, 
I don't know, but I hope it's not after my fish. Oh, no, don't do that to me. The old uh, Black Death repair seems to be hanging in there all right, Bushy. Oh, it's nothing to the Black Death, mate. That's only a flesh wound. <laughs> Can't stop the old Black Death that easy. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, that's I quite think, a big I thing. Think that's a very big thing. Oh, oh, it. Bushy. oh you think so? I... No, well, that or a big, big barracuda. I don't think it's a trevally. Oh, 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 oh. I like the other thing that keeps trying to bite your line. Yes, goes that's a really water. handy thing to happen, that. <laughs> Where the line cuts the surface of the water, it makes a little V, and these little oceanic queenies are chopping at it because they think it's another fish. You oh. hope they're little oceanic queenies oh. and not little mackerel, oh. mate. Otherwise, it'll be all over. That's a pretty big, long silver fish, Steve. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but... I've got a good feeling. Now we get a bit of a look at... Uh, how the old repair job holds out. Up and down on the GT next to the boat. I think he's wrapped himself up and done something funny there too. He's a nice fish. He's a nice GT. Oh, he's a lovely fish. Do you think that breakage could make the Black Death a bit luckier, Steve? It couldn't be much luckier than it was. Oh, no, 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 stop fish. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, he's coming out. Circling out. That's what you need, folks, in a fight like this. Good boat driver. We've done this a million times. And he's right on top of it. I'll be glad that this thing's in the boat. That's <laughs> <laughs> what we mean when we say we've got colour. It means you can just see the fish down deep in the water. <sighs> Splitting golf, he wants to... That's it. That's the most important thing, folks. If you're getting to this stage and you've got the chance to grab a fish, Steve's just taking his time, and if it bolts, he'll let it go. Like that. Like that. And I don't wrap the, the trace around my hand. I'm just bending it. Just putting a little bit more tension on it than Bushy's able to through the rod. Got him at a funny, funny sort of angle here, but... I swap to the gloved hand. Oh, and drop him. Now, I've obviously got the glove oh. on the wrong hand. I was keeping my right hand free to use the pliers, but I think I'm going to have to go for the right-handed grab. Now I've got him. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> I don't know who's got who uh, here. Oh. Better hold him up and give the folks a look at him. I will do. There's your fish. Oh. A very handsome specimen. Thank you, Steve. I was definitely talking about the fish. Look at that. Well, that's like a rabbit trap. We get him back in there, Bushy? Yep, give him a swim, Steve. Can I give him a little peck? Yes, you can. I think I might even have to do it. The last fish on the Black Death. There you go, mate. Oh, this thing, this thing, I thought I'd got rid of it. And he's <laughs> fixed it and he's still catching fish on it. I do not believe it. That's it, Bushy. We're going back for breakfast. Oh, dear. Today, folks, we've brought the great man up here to have a shot at some brim on lures. It's one of my favourite little estuaries. It's called the Bega River. It's not far from Bega, naturally enough. Now, you've got to work a bit in here. The brim don't leap out on the lures. You've got to cast in the right places. But I reckon the bearded burglar might just get a couple. It's actually the bearded burbler, you idiot. No, I thought if you found my brim, uh, you might become the bearded burglar. <laughs> Piscatorial burglar. <laughs> It's just not a matter of coming down here bushy and catching a fish. This is a specialist type of fishing we're doing today. And perhaps you might like to run it through the folks just what we're going to do. Well, it's pretty tricky. Brim are notorious for eating small lures. They're not a great big predator. They're only a fairly small fish on average, so they like small lures. Now, this is a little attack. Brim will eat a number of different lures, but I like these little attacks. They seem to work quite well for me. And because they're small, we really need an egg beater reel. Uh, the bait casters just require a bit too much weight on the lure to get them revolving with a little egg beater like this Stella, one of the new things that uh, Dump's got out. They don't need the spool to spin. And we've got some little gel spun line there, that's four pound gel spun. With this little lure I'll give it a flick out into the wind and we can cast our lures and they'll go where we want them to go. A couple of other tricks, if we get started we need a little loop knot here so the lure will swing freely, some chemically sharpened hooks and I reckon if we throw them in the right place we could uh, just catch a fish, Rexy. 
Is that a throw? That's a throw. That's his throw, folks. Uh, <laughs> that means let's do it. Where do you suggest I fish? In the paddock, do you? Down there. Right. With the brimmer. <laughs> Good snag there, Ricky. Do they follow you right out of the snag? They will. They'll come out. What, like that? <laughs> oh, oh, yes! <laughs> like that. Do they... Yeah, hang do on. They, I'm, do, I'm they follow be... you, do they follow you right out, Bushy? <laughs> I'm supposed to be showing you the beaker. You're not supposed to catch a monster first go. Oh, no. Isn't that just beautiful? Come down, I'll see if I can grab him for you. Oh, look at that. We got him! You like that? <laughs> Have a go at that! Tell you what, folks, that is a serious brim, but Bushy, that's not like the brim I get up at Naruma. They've got yellow fins, but that looks like to me like a Gippsland brim. Well, uh, that's actually a Canthopagrus uh, butcher irex. A what? Not something you catch uh, in an infectious diseases hospital. This is the southern brim, Rexy. It's not the one that you catch. Yeah. And uh, a good way to tell, and it isn't always that easy to tell, is that the head profile is a lot different. Yeah. Uh, yellowfin brim, or the Australis, yep. Acanthopagrus Australis, comes right up in a hump. Yeah. Whereas these ones have a much narrower profile, and also that that anal spike around here is much bigger on the yellowfin brim. But it is yeah. quite difficult to pick them. Yeah. Now I'm going to give him 910.78567272 grams, which is two pound on the knocker. <laughs> And that'll stop the riders from saying we exaggerate because the diver didn't put this one on, mate. You don't have to exaggerate much <laughs> with these tricks. I mean, you've got to work for them on lures. They yeah. don't sort of come easy, but you did very well. Great Isn't cast. That magnificent. Well, I'll give him a kiss and I'll put him over the back of the boat. Most important thing, folks, is don't, don't panic. Don't panic. I find panicking is the best method, Rexy. What's B this? plan? Don't uh, panic. Panic again. <laughs> now, he's a lot more silver than the other one, isn't he? Yep, he is. Well, dude, look at that. Oh, he's still a southern brim. Yeah. But he is certainly a lot silver. I think you've still got me. You've got me by a few grams. I don't know about that. He's a nice, <laughs> nice fish. <laughs> Gee, I tell you what, it puts a whole new perspective into brim fishing, doesn't it? Well, it's, uh, it's just a sneaky way to do it. Sometimes you have to work a bit harder. I mean, we've had to work. Yeah. have to cast our lures in the right places. And sometimes you don't... Whoa, sorry, Grim. Sometimes you don't get one for a while. Yeah. But uh, if you keep persevering, you've always said it, persevere and you'll do all right. Yeah. yeah. What a ripper. Yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely beautiful brim. Uh, you see why I like this brim spinning, Rex? It's a whole new aspect in brim fishing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, look, I just love it. It's hard work, but gee, it's fun when they when they have that look. certainly is. There he goes. You know, folks, that, uh, when you're in Rome, you do as the Romans do. And when you're in the uh, kitchen cupboard, you do as the broom does, the old human broom. <laughs> this is his home territory, and he comes here many, many days of every month. And I can see it now, folks. Barramundi, trout, Murray cod, brim, all the same. I would have gone out here with the sandworms and the shrimps and the prawns fishing for brim and got the kindergarten. But in here, mama and papa. Yeah. Well, we'll go and see if we can get uh, granddad. You are, you know what you are? You're a PA. <laughs> Thanks very much. A piscatorial assassin. <laughs> yeah, Although like you that. don't assassinate them, you let them go. <laughs> I got a hit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, He's I in. Got him. <laughs> well, it's been a while well, since we've had a hit. 
It has been a while. And, and <laughs> look, I, I'm sure the show doesn't show how hard we've worked. We just haven't come down here to brim paradise and donged them, have we, really? No, look, it's, there's a lot more work in it than you'd think. But if you work hard enough and throw lures in enough good places, you're going to have some fun. And look, yeah, we've had a ball today. We have had a ball. And that's what fishing's about, folks. You go out with a mate and you catch a few nice fish. And hopefully you don't end up with a lure or being spiked by one of these little brim. Yeah. Thank you very much, Doctor. Well, Bushy, it's been great being on your show, and I just hope that <laughs> next time I'll give him a kiss and give him a kiss. I just hope that next time you might have me on Kay Bush's Fishing World. Is there any chance? Uh, no, mate. You've caught too many big fish, and I haven't, so I don't think there's any chance you'll get back on Bushy's show. bad sort of backdrop for a little fishing session here. Viv and Sean have brought me out for a bit of a troll along the Bromby Islands. We're working our way slowly back towards Gove after having been all the way up to the Wessel Islands. And all the way down there are these strings of islands and they all have great fishing. We're just going to troll along the edges here looking for patches of bait. Hopefully we're going to catch some Spanish mackerel, some trevally, maybe some coral trout. There are all kinds of fish in here. It's a lovely way to spend an afternoon. Little mackerel viv. I'll grab yeah. it for you. All right. Oh, oh that quick was release. That for a release. <laughs> nice little, little Spanish little mackerel Spanish. about that long, yeah. Oh, Mate, this that's... is a pretty hot looking area. You must have caught some fish here in the past. Yeah, it's been pretty good lately. Um, just water's warming up a bit. And as you just saw before, the uh, bait fish were getting a bit scared. So I reckon might be in for a bit of a turn on here in a couple of hours or an hour or two. Yeah, no, it looks like a great area. How long have you been fishing this area? Um, beginning of the year, we came up here in June. Right. And um, yeah, it's been um, quite good around here. Usually we do this on our first or last day back. Oh, good one. Yeah, you got him. Cool fieldy. What do you reckon? <laughs> He's running. Two hits then. We saw some bait splashing around on the surface and bang, both of us got hit. Oh, he's taking some line. Look at him go. I think that might be a mackerel, eh? Yeah, he did a good run. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so do you ever get tired of it, mate? Nah, never. <laughs> the, every hit's better than the next one. <laughs> yeah. I guess you get to see a lot of other people catching fish and it's nice to get out there and catch one yourself, right? Eh? Oh, oh yeah, I, I love, it, love uh, fishing myself, but uh, nothing better to see other people catching them, I reckon. You get a lot of satisfaction from seeing your clients catch fish? Yep, more and more, every That's day. That's great. Come to me. That's a pretty light rod, too. Uh, got some grunt in them, though. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing oh. tougher, is there, pound for pound, I don't think, than those GTs. I can feel him on something. Might be the transducer or something, isn't no, it? Some... Just poke the tip down there and clear it. Have to try and bring him back around if you can. Uh, oh, he's gone. I think it was rocks he was on. Oh, OK. Found a bomby. He might still have the lure. No, nah, huh? oh, he's still got him back again. Oh, he's around something. Now he's gone. Up, gone there. Too good for us. Sometimes they are too good for you. But there's going to be some more in there. We'll go back and have another shot. I've got a little Mako here, Steve. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's all right. Yeah. You want to keep him for dinner or what? Um, yeah, I think the boys want to do something with all him. Right. So. <laughs> Lots of toothies on these. Yeah, oh, well, that's a start. Yep. First Spanish mackerel. Hopefully the first of many. First one for the day. Ooh, got to watch out for the pointy end on these. They've got sharp teeth. <laughs> All the hooks hanging out of that lure are a little bit exciting too. I'm glad Viv's doing this. Hey, he's got him now. Look at those teeth. 
All right, mate. Well, we'll hang on to him for dinner. Hey. He's a little beauty. Let's see if we can get a bigger one to start. Toothy critter. Yeah, he's shaking his head. Oh, yeah. That's a great coloured lure. They seem to like it anyway. Nothing like a barramundi lure. Yeah, that's a oh. nice release. Didn't even have to touch him. That's the go. That's the co Is that the colour they call Elton John? Yeah. yeah. Deadly barramundi colour and it's uh, working pretty well on the mackerel and barracuda too. Unlike Bushy's Rapala, which I stole out of his tackle box and he wasn't at all impressed and it's uh, swum pretty much unmolested this afternoon, but I'm saving myself a sun sinking. There's a big one out there with my name on it and it's looking for Bushy's lure. Well, that's been a long time coming. I've been watching Viv catch fish. Whoa! And now I finally managed to hook one myself. I've had so many hits. Ah. The sun's definitely sinking in the west. I think the boys are only staying out here to try and get me one. And I've finally managed to hook up on Bushy's favourite blue Rapala, which he told me if I didn't come back with the Rapala, I might as well not come back. So I think I'd have been in strife. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, it's a nice fish. Well, I didn't get my mackerel, but this is not a bad consolation prize, especially in this shallow, bomby studded water. I'm using 20 kilo gel spun mainline. And then as I said, I've got about two meters of 40 kilo nylon, and then a short length of single strand wire just to resist the, uh, the teeth of the mackerel. Don't really need it for fish like this trevally, but you just never know what's gonna come along next. Look at that, he's not even a particularly large fish. Whew. Because of the way he's hooked, I've been pulling him sideways through the water. Oh, it often happens, they hook up on the tail hooks, and then during the fight, get picked up on the, uh, on the front trebles as well. Yeah, just settle down, mate, I'm gonna let you go. There's one hook out. <laughs> Listen to him grunting. When I turn this hook out, he's going to fall back in the water. I don't even have to touch the fish. Oh, there he goes. Well, thanks, Viv. That was a great afternoon. We could have ended up with a lot more fish than we did. We had a lot of strikes that didn't hook up, but that happens sometimes when you're trolling. I think the mackerel were in that strange mood where they were, they were grabbing the lure, but they weren't really assaulting it like they do sometimes. That's fishing. If you caught them every time you went out, it'd be called catching, not fishing. That's one of the things that keeps you coming back, the unknown aspect. Tomorrow might be the day of the 50 or 60 pound mackerel. But tonight is definitely gonna to be the night of dinner on the back of swordfish, and I'm looking forward to that.